reason I want to start the conversation with introducing the war is that we need to be prepared. The test leaders of today need to be prepared to be the test leaders of tomorrow. And uh, I want to give mic to the war right now, and she will be talking about the new landscape and new challenges and new opportunities for us to be in this profession and what new roles probably will be emerging from those opportunities. And then we're going to follow up with some discussions of what it means for us and how we get ready for it. So start with the work. Thank you so much. It's such a great honor to be here, Anna. Um, we did meet in Ireland, and um, it was an incredible uh, um, meeting of the minds similar to here. Uh, my background is I'm a journalist. I worked at NPR News in Washington for 22 years. Uh, I've been the managing editor of Hanson Robotics, working with Sophia the Robot. Uh, I'm also deputy director of the Presidential Innovation Fellowship Program. That's a tour of duty in American innovation, which is coming to an end soon. Uh, but it's a great honor to be here to uh, talk to you about um, the future of AI and the lens that we are taking. Uh, my startup is called IVAL, and it stands for Voices of Wisdom. Uh, we returned uh, just a little bit ago from the United Nations, we were invited to bring a delegation Wars. of global Wars. storytellers and AI Wars. experts from around the world to have a full day uh, of um, workshops, interactive workshops on the future of storytelling and artificial intelligence. And the idea that um, as children, uh, you know, we learn by having uh, our parents read books to our um, kids. And so wouldn't it be amazing if, as we teach the future machines to be more socially intelligent and culturally intelligent, that we also teach them about our stories. Uh, Boyang Albert Lee is one of the most uh, pioneering AI storytellers. He is currently in San Francisco. And he actually was Disney's first AI researcher. So he talks about the fact that to function properly in a society, clearly, uh, we as humans rely a lot on uh, the cultural awareness between each other. And as AI becomes more sophisticated, um, it needs to have a deeper understanding of who we are as humans. And similarly, AI can play a major role in helping humans become more aware of different cultures around the world. Um, so why storytelling? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, we grew up reading books. And there's no reason why we can't do the same for machines and teach them about our history, our communities, our myths, and our legends. As I look around, I can tell that everyone here comes from a different, amazing cultural background. I don't know what that is, but I feel like you guys would have so much fun if you spent just three hours getting to know each other's backgrounds and where you grew up and who influenced you in your life. Was it your grandparents? and? You know, what are the traditions that you are taking forth and bringing to your um, children and to the next generation? So why storytellers? Because storytellers are the keepers of culture. In many parts of the world, uh, in the South Pacific in particular, that's an oral storytelling community. Uh, not much is written uh, until recently. And so storytellers are the ones who have been keepers of culture and tradition. Storytellers can be the ones to usher in a new era of cultural IQ in artificial intelligence. And storytellers can nurture a much deeper understanding of human cognition. And in fact, uh, there are uh, amazing AI researchers who come through the field of storytelling. So it's all around uh, comparative narratives and conversational AI, but their research is about computational narratives. And you know, how do you dissect a story? And how do you understand the, d the DNA of a story? And how can you teach that to a computer? So these are, these are the scientists and um, uh, AI experts who were with us um, in Geneva. So Wolfgang, he's from the Crow Native American tribe. He's an AI researcher at Florida International University. And he proved that the MIT story system 
can understand Crow literature. So the MIT Genesis story system has been fed primarily Shakespeare and Mark Twain to make it interesting. And he said for his master's thesis, he wanted to prove whether his culture could be understood by this machine. And by only feeding it 100 pieces of data, he was able to do that. Um, Rafael Perez y Perez is from Mexico City, and he's created a computer that generates narratives. It's called Mexica, and it uh, generates folklore from the um, Aztec culture. So the problem, of course, is that every day we use apps to message our loved ones and uh, games to battle our imaginary foes, and we use artificial intelligence to drive smarter decision making. But a key piece of the puzzle is missing, and that's global voices. Um, the problem and the challenge is that AI systems struggle to be responsive, for the most part, to the values, goals, and principles of different communities. And Mike had mentioned you know, around facial recognition. This is something you've read about. You know that these systems still are not um, really able to be inclusive. Um, too many AI systems reflect the biases and perspectives of developers. Um, AI algorithms train on data sets to learn patterns, which currently are limited in understanding global cultural contexts. And the fact that the lack of cultural diversity in data sets will in fact limit the effectiveness of governments as they're creating smarter cities and businesses at, as they're looking to expand into new markets. This is a quote from David Danks of Carnegie Mellon University. He's an AI and ethics and policy scholar. And he says, stories provide a window into the ways people perceive, interpret, and value the world. And to move AI beyond the narrow needs and interests of the current developers, we need to fully engage with the cultures and communities uh, around the world. And so he was one of the moderators at our summit in uh, Geneva. Um, very soon, cultural relevancy is going to need to be a two-way street for AI solutions to speak to people globally. Very soon, citizens are going to influence how AI services and solutions are being designed, created, and sold. If you look at the growing Hispanic American population, Google did a survey of uh, something like 5,000 Hispanic Americans. And they found that 70% uh, of the respondents said that it's important for the content that uh, they want to buy to be culturally relevant when they're gathering information about a purchase. Um, AI is only going to become, ev culture is going to be even more relevant in AI. Because if you're trying to create solutions for communities throughout the world and they download something and it doesn't culturally speak to them, they're not going to use it. Which means that we're going to go into this constant cycle of creating products that are not going to be effective globally, that are only going to be elect effective selectively for the ones who are elite, highly educated, and live in a Western uh, world. The age of AI, DevOps can't neglect the critical roles of QA and testing. And I come from a journalism background, and I look forward to the day when you are leading the creation of these solutions along with storytellers and journalists because you are the front lines of bringing empathy to machines. QA testers will influence how citizens experience empathy in machines. This can be something that inspires many people when you think about the future and robots and automation and what place you can have in it. I hear a lot, I read a lot about how automation has to become the testing has to become automated for it to be scalable, and that manual testing potentially is not the way to go anymore. I think that emphatically I reject that. We are not there yet. We have not created the infrastructure for this manual testing to go away and for everything to become automated when the data that currently exists does not even represent you and your background. So how do you expect to automate testing when it doesn't have your voice in it? It's an incredible opportunity for storytellers to work hand in hand to influence this new future. Uh, Stephen Hawking in 2016 said, 
beneficial AI will take time. And that's the category that this falls under, is that who is willing to speak up and say that we can't constantly be thinking about how to make money and not pausing and thinking about creating the infrastructures that we need. So one thing that we're working on is uh, the idea of these cultural engines. As you, uh, we have two big projects, um, which I'm excited that Anna is an advisor for one of them. So we're going to be putting out a global data set challenge on the stories of women in history, culture, science, and technology. This is to create algorithm, an algorithm that is able to capture the stories of women in particular. Uh, the point here is that we're on a 10-year mission to bring cultural IQ to machines. Initially, this data set will be used in our um, cultural conversational AI named Sina, but the data set is going to be public, and it's going to be published, we hope, on AI Commons. AI Commons is a new international endeavor to bring uh, data sets and methodologies around the future of AI to portals where other people can look at these data sets and learn from them. So imagine the future Wikipedia, where you could go looking for a data set, and you could go to AI Commons and read also about the methodology. So uh, this particular uh, data set that we're doing would actually feed something like this, where it's the, ent the data is being entered, and um, various techniques uh, will be used to um, attach features to it. Clearly, there'll be annotations that are really important. And then there's a critical role for testing, because um, we can't do this unless we make sure that what we're putting out there is also going to be relevant and something that is authentic. So a future career in uh, QA and cultural IQ could be you know, a cultural architect, um, cultural expressions leader. This is incredibly daunting. I mean, I'm not naive. By the way, I have eight children. My husband and I have eight children. We have raised eight children. The youngest is 20, seven boys and a girl. I understand what future lies for them. My granddaughter is five, and when I went and visited her in Pittsburgh, she ran and she calls me Aziz. She's like, Aziz, please come and meet my friend Alexa. <laughs> OK? So guess what? Don't you want to be a cultural expression leader for your granddaughter? Don't you want Alexa to also represent so much more than just telling the weather or you know what your date calendar is tonight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 